Hello, my name is John Pinto. I'm a mathematician and amateur astronomer, and I'm going to be presenting Dominic Prunet's course on celestial navigation. Welcome back to episode number six of Celestial Navigation, a course prepared by Dominique Prunet. You can find more about Dominique's books and resources associated with his books at marinenavigationbooks.com. In addition to learning where you can order his book, um, you will also be able to download some resources, including this slide deck. This episode, we're going to talk about how to determine the position of celestial bodies using the nautical almanac. We're going to do a very simple case uh, to basically show you the uh, flow of what you will be doing. So just as a reminder, uh, we're going to be looking for the uh, geographical position or GP or ground point of a celestial body. We're going to use the sun for our uh, example in this episode. And the things we're going to try to find from the almanac is where is that GP at the time we take our site. So we're looking for two things, basically a latitude and a longitude. The latitude we'll see is the declination in the almanac. And the longitude, approximately, is what's known as Greenwich Hour Angle, or GHA, uh, in the almanac. And you can see in our illustration here, let me turn my pointer on again, that the declination is going to correspond to the latitude above the equator. The GHA is going to correspond to the longitude west from Greenwich. And knowing those two things, we'll know exactly where the sun's GP is. So this is what the nautical almanac looks like. Um, each uh, page or double-sided page, well, the other side is for the planets and stars, but the right-hand side of the page, uh, they both cover three days. So in this particular example, this is from 2003, covering the days of July 3rd, 4th, and 5th, which were Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that year. And you'll see a table of GHA and declinations for the sun, the moon, a couple of other uh, pieces of information we'll get to when we do the moon. Um, twilight information, sunrise and moonrise information, uh, and uh, sunset and moonset information, and other information about the sun and the moon, uh, which we'll, we will use in later episodes. But this is basically what they call the daily pages in the almanac. Um, and uh, there's a nice little bookmark that comes with the almanac, and you just stick it in there. And as you're traveling, you uh, every three days, you change your bookmark so you know exactly where you are in the almanac. So <clears throat> let's get down to details. Let's say we wanted to know where the sun is on July 3rd, 2003 uh, at 1600 UTC. So you would open your almanac to uh, July 3rd, 4th or 5th. You look at the section for July 3rd. Let me see the day there. And these are your hours. Okay, so we wanna go down to 16 hours UTC and you cross over and the first column will tell you your GHA, basically your longitude, 58 degrees, 57.2 minutes. And if you forget what those are, up here is your degrees, and here is your minutes. And then over to the right of that will be your declination. Now, the declination doesn't change very often, so they don't repeat the degrees uh, except for every few lines. Uh, and of course, when the degrees change, and it's important to note not only the degrees, but also whether it's north or south, just like latitudes in on the earth are north or south. So this would be north 22 degrees, 57.5 minutes. And again, if you forget what the columns stand for, here's your degree symbol and here's your minute symbol. So now let's do an example where we're gonna use this information to uh, do some circles of position and see if we can figure out where we are when we took our sites. So we're going to do two sites on May 16th, 2009. We're going to be stationary, we're not going to be moving around, and we'll take one site in the morning and we'll take another site in the afternoon and see, using that information along with our sextant reading, 
if we can determine where we are. So the first site we'll take in the morning. Now we're gonna use whole hours of time. So we're not gonna be interpolating minutes yet. That's a little more advanced. We'll get to that. But to just illustrate the method. So let's say it's a 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 1700 UTC on May 16th. And where do we find the sun's GP? Okay, well, let's see. It's the 16th of May. I'm assuming this is from the May Daily Pages. We want to go down to 1700 UTC. And we see that the GHA is 75 degrees, 54.6 minutes. Now, because we know if they're west of Greenwich, um, then this is exactly the same as uh, a Western longitude. If it goes over 180 degrees GHA, which we'll talk about, uh, then you're talking about an Eastern longitude, but we still call the GHA from zero to 360. The declination is, again, we look for uh, the degrees uh, corresponding to this line. And we see that it's north 19 degrees, 14.6 minutes. And that corresponds to, if you pulled out a globe or an atlas, you'd see that that's somewhere over Cuba, actually Guantanamo Bay. And we'll see what that looks like in a minute when we plot it on our chart. At the same time that we, uh, we took that, uh, we looked that up in the almanac, we saw that our sextant was 49 degrees, uh, uh, measure of the sun's altitude above the horizon. We calculate our zenith distance, which was 90 minus our height, which is 51 degrees. And then we find what our circle of position radius is. 51 degrees times 60 is 3,060 nautical miles from Guantanamo Bay. We take out our uh, Mercator map and we start at Guantanamo where the sun was over and we measure 3,060 nautical miles and we draw a circle, part of an arc of a circle, okay? So then later in the afternoon, again, we're gonna use whole hour times. <clears throat> we take our second site at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 2,200 hours UTC. And what we find is that the sun has moved, I hope it's moved, uh, to 150 degrees, 54.6 minutes. And its latitude is pretty much the same, north 19 degrees, 17.5 minutes. And that position, if you again, you pull out your globe or your almanac, your atlas, and you uh, take a look to see where that is, that's uh, around Hawaii. So, you know, in a few hours time, the sun has moved from being over Cuba to being over Hawaii. So we will now plot the afternoon uh, GP of the sun on our chart. But first we need to see what our sextant reading says. Our sextant reading says the sun is 55 degrees above the horizon. So that gives us a zenith distance of 90 minus 55 of 35 degrees. The radius of the circle of position will be 35 degrees times 60 nautical miles per degree, and that gives us 2,100 nautical miles. So here we are, the ground point of the uh, sun is over here near Hawaii. We measure 2,100 nautical miles, and we draw a circle on our map, and we see that it either crosses up here somewhere near Vancouver or somewhere way down south in the middle of the uh, South Pacific. And as I had said on the uh, previous episode, you're gonna definitely know, are you, am I in Vancouver or am I in Tahiti, okay? So I'm going to guess that uh, since this is uh, designed for Sail Canada exam, this is probably where we are. That's probably where our dead reckoning position is. Zooming in on the crossing of those two um, circles of position, looks like we're somewhere in Stanley Park. And that's basically how celestial navigation figures out where you are. Now, we will not actually be using this particular method because it's not extremely accurate unless you've got a, I don't know, a globe, you know, the radius of like nine feet to give you the kind of accuracy that you would really want. So 
we're going to use what's called the Mark St. Hilaire method. I am not going to try to pronounce his name. I, I will totally screw it up. We're just going to call it Mark St. Hilaire. Uh, this is going to allow us much, much improved precision uh, down to one nautical mile or better. And the way that it works, the reason that you get such good uh, accuracy is instead of trying to, you know, map out 2,100 nautical miles, 3,600 nautical miles, whatever it is, um, because there is no way to accurately portray a round earth on a flat map. Um, and also just the, the scale is, is unbelievable. So um, what you actually will do is we'll say, we sort of know around where we are. That's called the assumed position. And we say, well, if we were there, how, what, at what height would we see our, our celestial body, our sun, for example? Now let's say it says uh, we would be at uh, 50 degrees uh, and, and 40 minutes. We actually take a site, we see where we really are, and let's say it comes up with 50 degrees and 41 minutes. Well, that's pretty good. That basically tells us that the uh, distance that we are from that assumed position is only one nautical mile. So we are somewhere around one nautical mile away from our assumed position. Not only that, but we can also calculate what direction uh, we the sun was from that assumed position. And we can then say that, well, our circle of position is only one mile away from that in that direction of the sun. We'll be able to uh, plot that and get very, very accurate um, idea of where we are, especially if we get two or three circles of position uh, using this method. Uh, it would be very, very accurate as to uh, how close you are. Like I said, probably within one nautical mile or better. The way we uh, accomplish this to make it simple for ourselves without, you know, lots of calculations, we actually have pre-computed uh, what are called site reduction tables, which you basically go into the table with two or three pieces of information and out will pop out what that height and, dis and uh, direction is. You'll be able to plot that and uh, put your circle of position on a very, very uh, uh, detailed chart. So this is sort of what it would look like as a you know, quick example. Um, let's say we decide we're at uh, this position on the earth. The sun's GP is out here somewhere at 216 degrees from there. And at that assumed position, the height of the sextant should have been 17 degrees and 25 minutes. But when we actually measured it, we were 17 degrees and 21 minutes. So our angle is a little smaller smaller by four uh, arc minutes. Well, that corresponds to four nautical miles. So we are four nautical miles further away. If you remember, we said as you get further away from your object, your angle is going to get smaller. So you're four nautical miles away. And instead of being on this line of position, I would have went through that assumed position. You're on this line of position. Sorry, this line of position versus this. So now you can plot on your uh, on your on your plot that you are somewhere on this line because everywhere on this line would measure that same uh, sextant angle. When we get a second line of position and it crosses, we'll know exactly where we are on this line. So it's a very very accurate method. Thank you, uh, Mark Saint Hilaire, for figuring it out. And this is the method we'll be using in our subsequent episodes. Our next episode now is we'll talk about the sextant, a crucial tool, obviously, to helping you determine where you are. Uh, we'll talk in the next episode, we'll talk about its history and its principles of operation. Thank you very much. See you next time.